So again, uh, draw yourself a set of axes. Let's draw this all positive because all you've got on the right hand side is all absolute values, so everything's going to be positive. And we're going to draw these things. Now, I wonder how comfortable you're starting to get with just individual absolute value graphs. If I just said the absolute value of x plus 1, are you starting to get an image in your mind here? Hmm. You know it's going to do that bouncy thing, right? You know it's going to do that bouncy thing. What does the plus 1 do? Does that do? Ah, okay. I'm going to take advantage of something you've actually known for a long time back from graphing parabolas. Do you remember? Everyone knows what this looks like. Everyone has a good idea of what that shape is in their mind. Okay? Now, what's the difference between that shape and this shape? And the answer is what we call a horizontal shift, right? So the whole thing, that sort of um, happy shape there, has moved to the left, okay? Now, it's a bit weird because that plus one, plus usually means to the right, right? But you can all, all easily check it because if you say, okay, if I solve for this, find the x-intercept, you can say, oh, Negative 1 is the thing I have to put in there to get an intercept out of it. So instead of having its, its vertex and the origin, it's going to shift over. Okay? It's going to move one unit you know, over here. Well, this does exactly the same thing. right? If I just gave you regular old absolute value of x, you know it's going to bounce right there at the origin. But that plus 1 means move over. Come on over one more unit. So this is what I'm going to get. Okay, so there's my first part. What about x minus 3? When you chuck the absolute value signs about that, which way am I shifting now? Right. I'm going to the right and I'm going three units. Okay, so if that's uh, negative 1, okay. try and make sure your scale is somewhat consistent. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to draw the same graphs. So it's going to look like this. Okay, now, these blue graphs, neither of them is actually what I'm supposed to graph. I'm supposed to graph what happens when you add them together. Okay, so to see what's happening, I want to go kind of in a weird order, right? Firstly, I'm going to start with something nice and simple, which is, can you see, if you cover up, I don't have something big enough, really, but if you cover up your entire graph that you have drawn, except for the part to the right of x equals 3, just cover up everything except for that. Okay. We want to add these two graphs together. Well, one has a gradient of 1. The other one also has a gradient of 1. So if you add them together, what gradient do you expect to get? Gradient 1. It's gradient 1. I think that gives you gradient 2, right? Look, it's kind of like this guy's pulling up and this guy's also pulling up. So if you pull up together, you're going to get a steeper shape. Do you agree with that? So here's what's going to happen. If you draw a line up like this, from x equals 3, you can draw a little filled circle there because you're adding this to this, right? Whatever that happens to be. Well, this is 0 plus something else happens to be 4. Okay, so 0 plus 4 is equal to 4. So I know I'm going to be there. And then what happens when you add these two guys together is that the result will be steeper than the both of them. You see that? So it's kind of like, look, this is increasing, this is increasing. Think about it like two, you and a friend um, pouring water into a bath, right? So if you're pouring in individually, the rate goes up. If your friend is pouring in, the rate goes up. Well, if you both pour at the same time, it's going to get fuller, faster. Does that make sense? So that's what that looks like. You can see it's getting fuller, faster, and faster, and faster. Okay, so far, so good. Now have a look over here, do the same thing, cover up half your graph, but this time, rather than to the right of 3, cover it up to the left of negative 1. What does this mean? What's going on here? Isn't it the same thing but in reverse? This is not you two putting water into your bath and it's getting fuller and fuller and fuller. This is you two trying to get water out of the ship, right? It's like, oh no, we're sinking, get your buckets out. One of your friends is getting water out and your other, you are also getting water out. So together, water is coming out faster than if you're doing it individually. Does that make sense? So again, you can draw a line like this, going to there. And if you put them together, gradient negative one, another gradient of negative one, then combined, 
it's a gradient of negative two. Okay. Right, now the reason I did it in this funny order is now that you can see what's happening on to the left and on to the right, I wonder if you can work out what's happening between. On the right hand side I said you're both putting water into the bath. Yeah, so you're combining efforts. Over here, you're both pulling water out. So you're shoveling it out and tipping it over the edge. What is happening in between? Hmm. Yeah, there's a straight line. There is a straight line. I should point out, I already have two straight lines. What kind of straight line are you referring to? A horizontal straight line. Yeah, okay. Now, the question is, why is it horizontal? Well, if this part of the graph is like both of you pouring water in, and this part of the graph is both of you getting water out, what's happening in the middle? Well, I think you are pouring water in, and your friend, who's a jerk, right, is pulling water out at exactly the same time and exactly the same rate, because one of you has gradient 1 and the other has gradient negative 1. Do you see that? So what happens, the result is, you exactly cancel out with each other. How much is the water level changing? And the answer is, it's not. It's just staying level because you guys are fighting, okay? So therefore, this combined graph, this is it. You're done. That's the whole shape of the graph. By the way, what is that flat line? It's going to be 4. Okay? And you can test that out if you want. You can do the algebra. In between here, I left off some of my labels. Which branches are we adding up together? Which are the branches that are being combined? Can you see? This is y equals x minus 3, and this is y equals 3 minus x. So in this part in here, 4, negative 1 to x, to 3, the branches I'm interested in are this one here. Do you see that? That's 3 minus x. And this one here, which is x plus 1 y equals x plus 1 plus 3 minus x. Do you see what's going to happen to the algebra? What happens? What happens to those x's? They, they cancel each other out because remember, one of you pour, is pouring water in and the other one is taking water out. Crazy. So they're gone. And then what happens to these guys? They just collect, just like you predicted. Okay.